y'all ready to vote for Donald J. Trump on Saturday? Okay. Has anybody in here early voted? Because, you know, okay, we got some early voters. This is what I want to see. First of all, it starts here in South Carolina. It starts on Saturday when we defeat Nikki Haley, who, why is she still in the race? Why, bless her heart, and I know y'all know what that means. Is she still in this race? It starts Saturday, and then we have 257 days, ladies and gentlemen, to November 5th when we take this country back for we the people. So we got a little race on our hands here, though, because I think we all know what is in store for us. Can you guys believe this is the third time Donald Trump has run for president of the United States? And it will be the third time, as far as I'm concerned, Donald Trump wins as president of the United States. The truth is, this one, they were all important. 2016, we changed the game, right? Nobody saw Donald Trump coming. Think back to that election. That, that was really a pivotal point in the political history of America. Everybody, remember when Donald Trump came down the escalator? Anybody a golden escalator Donald Trump fan? We got a couple. If you weren't, that's okay. He maybe had to prove himself a little bit to you, but he came down that escalator and everybody said, this is a joke. This is a publicity stunt. He's gonna drop out after next week. He's announcing a new season of The Celebrity Apprentice. And then one by one, 17 primary candidates, seasoned politicians, people who knew politics like the front and the back of their hand. He took them out one by one and left standing right about this time in 2016, Donald J. Trump as the Republican nominee for president. I mean, wow. And with him, he started a movement, the America First MAGA movement. Anybody in here ultra MAGA? Yeah. I love how they say it like it's a bad thing, like it's a problem that we love our country. People say that, I'll do an interview and they'll say, well, what does this mean, ultra MAGA? I'm like, to be ultra MAGA means you love the United States of America. You get up every day, you go to work, you pay your taxes, you go to church, you love your family, you love your children, you love this country. That's what it means to be ultra MAGA. That is nothing to be ashamed of. That's something I want to shout from the rooftops, ultra MAGA right here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So we changed the game in 2016, and obviously our family was very new to politics. We had never experienced any of this before. In fact, whenever the campaign started happening, they kind of looked at all of us in the family and they said, you guys want to go out on the campaign trail? We were like, I get no, nobody told us how to do this. There's no handbook for it. There was no guide. But it was interesting because I think my father-in-law actually knew what was about to happen before it happened. He sat all of us down before he announced he was running for president. And he said, guys, if I do this the right way, if we do this the right way, they're going to come after us. I need you guys to understand that it's not just about me getting into this race. It's about all of us as a family. And I need to know you guys understand what that means. Is everyone on board for what this means? And of course, we're like, yeah, like, how bad could it be? <laughs> what could they possibly do at this point? And then he won the election in 2016. And I think we all naively thought, oh, well, now all the fighting ends. Now we come together for the country. Now people will get on board and support him because he's the leader of the United States of America. He's the leader of the free world. And shouldn't we want success for our leader? Shouldn't we want the person leading this country to do the great things that we know he was going to do? And of course, it was quite the opposite. I think it was three minutes after they announced that he had finally won Pennsylvania at like three o'clock in the morning on November 9th, 2016, that they had articles start coming out that said today is when we start the impeachment of Donald Trump. They never wanted to give him a chance, right? They didn't give him a chance in that election. They weren't gonna give him a chance to actually be president of the United States. They started in with the Russia collusion hoax. 
Think about that bunch of nonsense and how much information, by the way, we are getting day by day about what really happened with that. We did not collude with Russia on our campaign. The Democrats in the Clinton campaign actually colluded with Russia and shame on them. Where is their penalty for what they did? We'll all hold our breath on that, ladies and gentlemen, right? But we saw exactly what the game plan was for Donald Trump from the beginning. They were going to target him. They were going to go after him. But it didn't matter because think about all the things he was able to do for this country. The lowest unemployment for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, veterans, women that we had seen in some cases in the history of this country. Manufacturing came back to this country. We had historic trade agreements with China, with Mexico, with Canada. We had, instead of a war in the Middle East, peace agreements being signed in the Middle East thanks to Donald J. Trump. Historic, right? We had meetings with Kim Jong-un of North Korea to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. And probably the thing that was most underrated, but now we understand the importance of it so much, our energy independence, ladies and gentlemen, right? Think about the first decision Joe Biden made as president of the United States. His first executive order was to shut down the Keystone XL pipeline, right? Think about the snowball effect that had on inflation, on gas prices. That gave leverage and money to Vladimir Putin of Russia to invade Ukraine. It enriched Iran so that Iran could support Hamas to commit the atrocities that we saw happen in Israel and stoke that war. You could argue that had Joe Biden not done that one single decision, things would be very different in this country and very different in this world. But the truth is Joe Biden never cared about what was best for the United States of America. This guy doesn't even know where he is half the time. I read an article earlier today about Joe Biden and how his day goes. If you guys haven't read it, it's quite a read. His cat wakes him up, apparently somewhere in the neighborhood of 7, 7.30 in the morning. And then he does some of his uh, work with a person who gets him more steady on his feet. He's got the special shoes on. He gets into the office around 10 a.m. And then they try to target just a couple of hours in there to make sure that he's at his sharpest so that he can face the media or make any major decisions. This is a guy who the special counsel came out not too long ago, about a week ago, and said, yes, he took classified documents as a senator and as a vice president, which he cannot do and does not have the ability to declassify. But don't worry, we're not going to charge Joe Biden with anything. Why? He's just a tottery old man. He had good intentions. He doesn't really understand all of what's going on right now. That's the president of the United States of America right now, ladies and gentlemen. We know all the good that happened under, under Donald Trump as president, right? We felt it every day. It was palpable. Things were working for people in America. And they look around right now and they really ask themselves the question. It's the Ronald Reagan question. Are you better off now than you were three years ago? Is life more affordable for you than it was three years ago? Is gas lower? than it was three years ago, $1.87 a gallon under Donald J. Trump. I'll just remind everybody of that. And everyone looks around and they say, man, feels like we're on the verge of World War III. Feels like things are going in the wrong direction. And I don't think it is too much, ladies and gentlemen, to say that if we do not win this election on November 5th of this year, I don't believe we have the same country on the other side of it. This is a must win election for us. And there is one person who we know can do the job because he's done it before. There's one person who quite frankly doesn't need this job and by all accounts shouldn't still be trying to have this job because man are they doing everything they can to him to make his life a living hell because he wants this job. But he knows, like we all know in this room, that he is the only person who can give the country back to we the people, it's Donald J. Trump, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not for us, I don't think it's for any of us in this room, right? This is for the future generations of America. 
I have two young kids. I have a six-year-old son named Luke, and I have a four-year-old daughter who I named after the Carolinas. Her name is Carolina. Did anybody see my father-in-law at the, at the event recently? So he, lo he loved this. When I told him that we were going to name her Carolina, back whenever, before she was born, he was like, oh, I like that name. Was that a choice for the campaign trail? And I was like, no, it's a choice because I love North Carolina and I wanted to represent my home state. And he goes, oh, that's good. Do you think I could use it in South Carolina? I was like, yeah, I think the, I think the folks in South Carolina, what do you think? Can she also be from South Carolina? Okay. I love it. So funny. But this is for them. This is not about right now. Life is tough now. It's not getting any easier, thanks to Joe Biden and the Democrats. We know that. But this is about preserving the America that I got to grow up in. This is the greatest country on the face of the earth. We are so blessed to be able to say that we are Americans. And I want my kids to be able to grow up in that same country. I want them to be proud to be an American. And you see what they're doing to kids in this country right now. Look around at all the schools. They're indoctrinating our kids with all kinds of crazy, crazy radical ideology, critical race theory, teaching them that this is a racist, hateful country, teaching them that they should hate this country right now. That is not the America we want. We want people to love this country, but the truth is the people at the top right now feel like they're doing everything they can to destroy America. Look at our southern border. Look at how they have just opened the gates, rolled out the red carpet, and said anyone who wants to come here illegally right now, this is the time to come. They say somewhere in the neighborhood 10 million people have illegally come into this country since Joe Biden became president of the United States. You can probably add 50% onto that, probably closer to 15 million. Look at the city of New York. Look at the disaster that they've seen in New York right now. It's gonna cost the city of New York $12 billion over the next three years to deal with the influx of illegal immigrants coming in. They're giving them $1,000 debit cards now, prepaid debit cards every month. They're putting these people, in some cases, afford, uh, ahead of uh, American citizens who've been waiting in line for affordable housing for so long. They say, well, wait a minute, I did the right thing. I got in line, I paid my taxes, I paid my dues, and now this person who broke our law to come here is getting ahead of me in line. That's not how it's supposed to work. This is so bad for our country. It's taxing every system we have. We have got to close our borders. If we don't have a border, ladies and gentlemen, we do not have a country. I know a man who has always had a plan and did it when he was president of the United States. Donald Trump had the lowest border crossings in the history of us keeping track of those things in the United States of America. We gotta get back to that place in this country as soon as possible. And I'll tell you, it's amazing to, to know him as my father-in-law because I can tell you, I, I don't need to be out here doing this stuff. I, I do it because I believe in him. I do it because I love this country. I do it because we have to win this election. When you see the way they have weaponized every system possible against this one man, people look around and they say, this one guy, really? All of this against one guy. See, they didn't count on Donald Trump being who he truly is. And I, tr I believe, and I've believed this from 2016, that this is not a fight between Republican and Democrat, left versus right. This is good versus evil. God is on our side. Everywhere I used to go in 2016, I would hear the same thing. People would say, we're praying for you. We're praying for your family. We're praying for Donald Trump. And I got to tell you something, folks. Prayer works. It means something. I believe that Donald Trump was made for such a time as this. Because let's be honest, no one else without the help of the Almighty would be able to withstand the attacks. And not just withstand them, but be facing head forward, face forward, going like he is, and nothing is slowing him down. Let me tell you, they thought they were gonna take him down with impeachment number one, 
with impeachment number two. And they were like, wait a minute, pe people still like Donald Trump? What? They're, they would still vote for this guy? So they said, let's do, let's do a little something else. Let's throw an indictment his way and let's see what happens. That's gonna take this guy out. We know we do the indictment. Indictment number one happened, poll numbers went up. Indictment number two happened, poll numbers went up. Old Fannie Willis over in Fulton County thought that she would be cute and put out a mugshot of Donald Trump. They said, Fannie, you gotta put the mugshot out. This is the nail in the coffin for Donald J. Trump. I have never seen a better mugshot in my entire life. Coolest mugshot in the history of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. And guess what happened? Poll numbers went up. There was something different that hit with that mugshot that people didn't really expect. See, they thought that would take him out. They thought that would embarrass him or do whatever their plan was. And people looked at that mugshot and they said, you know what? I kind of see myself in this mugshot. I see the same system that has been against me that hasn't been working for my family for so long against this guy. That's the guy that I'm voting for. If they're all against him and they're desperate to keep him out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, there must be something that he's got on them. And they know exactly what it is because Donald Trump has started and will finish draining the swamp in Washington, D.C. You see them going after him in New York in such an egregious fashion. Letitia James is, uh, she, first of all, she ought to be ashamed of herself, and of course she's not. She is just a stain on uh, attorneys general across the country and should be disbarred and banned from ever practicing law ever again. Because you see what they're doing to him in his home state of New York. This is a guy who changed the skyline of New York City. When Woolman Rink was bloated out of budget, this is the skating rink in Central Park. Back in the 80s, they said, we'll never get this finished. It's so over budget, we can't get it done. We don't have the resources. They called up Donald Trump and he came in and finished it ahead of schedule with like half the budget, got it done. You check out the skyline of New York City and you cannot look at it without the touch of Donald Trump on those buildings. And yet, what do they wanna to do to him? His life's work, take down the Trump organization for what? For taking out loans from banks who did their own due diligence and then paid them back ahead of schedule and made them hundreds of millions of dollars. They called Donald Trump and the Trump Organization a whale. They wanted to do more business with them. But this is the problem when you have people who are looking for crimes. Show me the man and I will show you the crime. That's how they're operating now. And I'll tell you something, if they're able to do it to Donald J. Trump, what chance do the rest of us have? And the answer is we don't. So that is also what is at stake right now in this election. Because if we let these people get away with the communist tactics, these are straight out of the USSR, ladies and gentlemen, we will not have the same country on the other side of this. When they take your rights away, they don't just give them back to you. But I'll tell you, I give him so much credit because nothing stops him, nothing distracts him, nothing gets in his way. I have never seen him more focused than he is right now on becoming the 47th president of the United States because he understands what is at stake at this point. It is palpable all across this country and I think what has happened with the indictments, with the mugshot, with all of it, and with Joe Biden's horrific job as president of the United States is that over the past three years, people who might have been asleep, we are awake, ladies and gentlemen, People see it, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. I'm going to make a prediction here right now today that Donald Trump will win by such a historic margin on November 5th. It'll be unlike anything we've ever seen in this country. But it starts here, and I'll, uh, from my lips, yes, ma'am, let's do it straight up. We're going to send that one right up there. 
Some of you may have heard my father-in-law endorse me to be the co-chair of the Republican National Committee. <laughs> Here's the truth. You cannot win the presidency without the support of the RNC. But we need some change. We need to make sure that every penny of every dollar donated to the RNC is going to Donald Trump's campaign, to making sure that we expand our lead in the House with America First patriots who love this country, that we take back the Senate on November 5th of this year. And let's face it, folks, we got to play this game a little bit differently. We have thought that we could play the game on the up and up, and we see what they did on the other side. 3 a.m. dumps, ballots full, uh, filled in suitcases, don't know why you would ever have that happen, but they all say it was fine, right? We know differently because we know that 81 million people were not so inspired by a guy who campaigned out of his basement and had to like 10 hula hoops at his events that they came out and gave him a win like this country has never seen. 81 million, they say, voted for Joe Biden. I'm not buying it, ladies and gentlemen. Neither are they on the other side, by the way. They know it's true. They know it's true that this, it's just garbage. So we know that they play this game a little differently, right? So now we have to play this game differently. We're not just gonna fight fire with fire on this one, folks. We're gonna fight fire with dynamite. I'm gonna tell you, if I am elected co-chair of the RNC, we are going to have out of control, like we've never seen in America, voter registration, legal ballot harvesting all over this country, a ground game like we have never seen before, election day operations, poll watchers in every polling location across this country. And we're not just gonna poll watch. We have already seen that the RNC has started it and we will continue doing this. Trained poll watchers, these are people who go in and actually physically handle the ballots. You can count every ballot coming in so you know how many ballots go out. We are gonna have to play this game so much better than the Democrats that we leave nothing to chance come November 5th. And I'll tell you something else we have to start doing, early voting. I know we love one election day, we love paper ballots, we love everybody to have voter ID because that makes sense, doesn't it, in the United States? We may get back there one day, but we are not there today. And so because of that, we are going to have to start banking our votes. And we do that with turning out to early vote. So everybody in this room, I want you to listen up because this is your charge from me as we head towards election day. Again, 257 days, not that I'm counting, but everyone counts and I'm gonna need a long nap on November 6th. I'll just say that because we're working hard. You guys have to get out and you have to early vote. Encourage your friends and family to early vote. And then they take someone every day after that to early vote as well, all the way up to election day so that we have so many votes banked. We swamp the system and it doesn't matter how many dumps of ballots they have in the middle of the night. It doesn't matter what kind of funny business they're playing in Detroit, Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, okay? Donald Trump will be victorious on November 5th. And that's how we're gonna win this thing. Got to do it. We got to do it. So my father-in-law is going to be here over the next couple of days. He's coming on Saturday. I'm going to come back with him on Saturday. I'm going to bring my husband on Saturday. We're going to have a great victory on Saturday for Donald Trump, right? We feel good. And hopefully at that point, maybe someone can talk to Nikki Haley about deciding to get on board with us and go forward to defeat Joe Biden, because that's what it's gonna take. We all need to cohesively come together. We all need to focus on the goal at hand, and that is victory on November 5th. So I wanna say thank you to you guys.
thank you for, I'm sure we have some volunteers in here. If you guys want to volunteer and you're not signed up already, donaldjtrump.com, you can go to volunteer. We would love to have you. Again, poll watchers in every polling location across this country. On, I would like an hourly rotation so we have all the eyes poised and ready to go. And it's the second you get tired of watching, somebody's going to back you up. We're going to have a, a, a rotation going as far as I'm concerned. But thank you. Thank you for fighting. Thank you for believing. Thank you for praying. Thank you for loving this country. We love it just like you do. And I can tell you that there are a lot of things that would be easier for my father-in-law to do, but he loves this country. He will save this country. He will give it back to we, the people. So thank you. 257 days to victory, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go get them. Let's win this big, bigger than ever before. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. God bless you guys. Thank you.